They couldn't call them corn dogs if it didn't have corn in it. That would, that would be false advertising. Technically, corn dog, a corn dog is a vegetable. It is the first, the corn dog's first name is corn. Hi guys and welcome back to the 30 in 30. This is uh, uh, what, 23, episode 23. And I wanted to take a few minutes, uh, well, maybe seconds. And thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for, for being a part of the 30 and 30 this year. Uh, we have been putting out a new video every single day for the entire month of April, taking us through calving and whatever else we have going on on the ranch at that time. And it has really been amazing. If this is your first time here, I'm gonna put a link up here. We have a playlist that's set up for the, uh, for the entire month of April's vlogs. And uh, hopefully I can get those in order and then you can watch them from beginning to end if you feel left out. We've went through the gator breaking down to buying a new gator, to calving, to calves that have almost died on us, saving their lives. I mean, just, just uh, the amount of stuff that, that can happen in, uh, in just a month is amazing and coming up we get a chance to show you how much can happen in 24 hours with our 24-hour live stream uh, direct from the ranch coming up and starting on may 1st at about 7 a.m and running until 7 a.m on may 2nd so that's going to be a lot of fun not only do you get a chance to see what happens in an entire month you get a chance to see an entire day too and uh, the differences between the two while calving is still going on on the ranch just outside that window actually um, we have uh, got to do some other projects as well. The entire month can't be just about calving, obviously. We have, we have a ranch to run, we have businesses to run, and one of the most important businesses on the ranch is the farm store. People can pull in, they can, they can buy beef, they can buy pork, they can get chicken, they can buy vegetables, all kinds of stuff, eggs, baked goods. Heck, you can even get an Our Wyoming Life uh, hat at the store. But the point is that uh, we, have to, we have to put effort into that as well. So today uh, we are going to be not only checking cows, we'll do that a little bit later, but we have a couple projects that we have to get done for the farm store and more specifically for the Edible Prairie Project. What is the Edible Prairie Project? Well, um, if you don't know, if you do, great. If you don't, I'm gonna explain it to you really quick. Uh, the Edible Prairie Project is Erin's nonprofit. Um, she started it with her friend Megan. Actually, it's both of theirs, they're co-founders. And uh, basically the entire gist is putting local food in front of families that need it. Uh, they they started just a what a year and a half ago maybe something like that, and it has really exploded. Uh, they are helping provide food for our community, and a lot of it comes from right here on the ranch. So today, Erin gets to uh, take part in her very first green harvest of the season. Now, none of this is going to EPP, I don't think, but uh, it'll be going into the farm store, but we do get to test a really cool piece of equipment that the Edible Prairie Project managed to get through some uh, grants uh, through, the, through the government. So we're gonna be able to test something called a greens harvester. And I've never, never used one before. I've never even seen one used, uh, but we get to build it and then we're gonna take it out and we're actually gonna harvest with it with Aaron's help, of course. So before we get that far though, we actually have to run over to the high tunnel because we have to open it up. It's getting warm outside, the sun is shining. We're gonna go over there. We're gonna open up the high tunnel and uh, take some row cover off and, and I'll show you what we're gonna be working with today. Alrighty, so this is the high tunnel. This is actually high tunnel number two. There's another one over there. I think it's high tunnel number one, unless Aaron did some weird high tunnel A and then high tunnel number two, I don't know. So anyway, in here, uh, Aaron has lots of stuff growing already. Now, a lot of this has been growing uh, for the last eight weeks here in the high tunnel. And even though it is about 30 degrees outside, I don't know what the temperature is in here, but it feels nice and toasty 
let's check it out. 90 degrees almost here in the high tunnel. So we're still freezing at night, getting down below 32 degrees. So at night we cover everything up with these row covers, but during the day we have to come and take them all off and then open up some end doors to get some ventilation in here because it will get over 100 degrees in here. So I'm gonna start off today. I'm gonna go ahead and get the row covers moved off. We're gonna open a door and then we're gonna take a look at what we've got underneath. I'm starting to roast in here, so we gotta get some doors open. But first, uh, I just wanted to say that about the high tunnel, uh, that this is an unheated high tunnel. There's no heat in here. Every single bit of heat comes from the sun. So during the day, really, really hot. <laughs> At night, it does tend to get a little chilly in here, but the ground doesn't freeze. And that's what enables Aaron to start growing about two months before uh, you could actually start growing outside or maybe even longer. The other really cool thing, and I know Aaron is extremely proud of her gardens here, but I'm extremely proud of her because 60% of what she grows in her gardens goes directly to the Edible Prairie Project that goes directly to families in need. I think uh, a lot of us have been in that position where we needed a little bit of help and you wouldn't think that a bag of lettuce or a couple tomatoes would make a difference, but I talk to families all the time that are just so thankful that uh, EPP exists and that they're able to uh, to work with them. So let's open up some end doors and then we're gonna head back to the shop and build something called a greens harvester. I'm kind of excited for it. I don't really know. I don't even know <laughs> which one of these things it harvests. It's all green, right? So maybe it harvests everything. I don't know. We're gonna find out. Now I know somebody's gonna say, why are you out walking around when you have that nice brand new gator? And to that person, I would say we could probably all use a, a little walk now and then. Not that I'm the most healthy of people. Hell, I'll, I'll down a pack of Oreos with the best of them. But, you know, getting out and walking, it does the body good too. Alrighty. I am gonna grab a workbench. <clears throat> I'll be right back. This is her greens harvester. Oh, thankfully it has instructions. Okay. A nice little note from Shelby. Assembled and packaged by Shelby. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Shelby. That's kind of cool. Hmm. All right. I don't know what any of this stuff is. Let's try to get it all out of the box to start with. All right, so remove harvester and other contents from packaging. Loose contents should, be, should include food grade lubricant, drill support arm, Velcro straps. That must be this two backing plates, and six flathead screws. Okay, attach basket to frame. I think it's already attached. Left side, insert basket arm. Oh, okay, here we go. Insert basket frame arm R into its mounting channel on the upper left upright. Which way is left and which way is right? I'm gonna say it's supposed to go into this hole. Oh yeah, there's like a little groove here. It looks like 
this thing is supposed to lock into or something. Okay, I'm not, I'm not following along. Okay, so yeah, it goes into there somehow. Oh no, wrong one. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this one goes into here. This one goes into the other side. It makes some sort of basket. And I'm guessing we just start with this side. Okay. Cover the small backing plate and secure it with two screws. Okay. So this is the harvester. We got the basket installed. Now we're gonna put a drill on. Carefully remove tape from blade. There's apparently a blade down here. This is the blade here, so we're gonna remove the tape. Oh, and guard, remove the guard. Ooh, it's got a wicked blade, look at that. That's a scary looking blade. And it's very, very sharp too. All right, so insert battery into drill. We already did that. This is actually EPP's drill. They got their own drill. Uh, set clutch to the drill position. Yep, set drill speed for maximum setting. All right, we're all set. Slide cordless drill chuck over top of drive shaft, which is here. Okay. Um, stop, you are about to engage the drive on this machine. Ensure the blade is free from obstructions and not near anybody. Grab the keyless chuck with your left hand and slowly squeeze the trigger until the drill stress. Why do they have to teach you how to chuck a drill? That's weird, okay. All right, so, <laughs> uh, firmly grip the chuck, hit the trigger again to seat the chuck. Yeah, 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 back off the clutch. Back off the clutch to half of its max setting. This should allow for adequate operating torque and jam production. Jam production, okay, so we'll go half of its, how does this one move? All right, there we go. That seems to be it. The rest of it all comes in the field. Things turn, blades move. And apparently our goal is not to lose a finger. Look at that. All right, so it's all built. Um, really all we have to do is wait for Erin now to come and uh, show us what we're gonna be cutting and she's gonna show us how it works. Um, I do wanna thank the folks from, what is the name of this company? Farmer's Friend. Uh, apparently that's where Aaron got all this stuff. But thank you to Shelby for, uh, for building half of it for us, or probably more than half. Thank you very much, Shelby. Um, if you watch the channel, then hey, there's your shout out. Alrighty, let's go find Aaron. Speak of the devil, here she is. This is your thing. That's my thing. What is it called? It's a quick greens harvester. There you go. Do you think it's gonna work? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Here's the, uh, okay, quick cut oh. greens harvester. See, so I was wrong too. Cuts <laughs> off your fingers, <laughs> makes you wanna read a book. <laughs> Which I don't know how you hold the book if you don't have any fingers, but if you look at the little guy in the picture, he doesn't have any fingers either. Look at him, no, no fingers. Nubbins. <laughs> nubbins. All right, you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, so we are going over to the high tunnel. Yep. We are gonna harvest something. I don't know, we were in there earlier and I don't know what we're harvesting, so we were just like, you know, looking at the pretty green stuff. And we're bringing bins. Yep. The sink is here for why? To wash. To wash, and then all this is going in the farm store. Yes. Ooh, I got this thing. Okay. There you go, you can ride shotgun. Where are you gonna sit? See how I rate? The new thing gets to sit shotgun. <laughs> I'm stuck on the back. I am fine. Thanks for noticing. Before we get started, can you help me out? Yeah. Can you explain better than I can, uh -huh. or did, what EPP does and all this good stuff and like where the green harvester came from and like, okay. you know, can you do that? Yeah. 
what you guys are going to see here today is vegetables for our veggie basket program. Oh, it is? See, I lied. I said I didn't know where these were going. <laughs> so the, the stuff for today is going into the farm store. Okay, I, would, I didn't but lie. in two weeks, we start, less than two weeks, we start our spring greens veggie basket program. Um, and so for the four weeks of May, four Mondays in May, we're doing 25 um, weekly produce baskets. Um, and we provide them free for SNAP and WIC clients and we also have a reduced price basket for people who fall below the self-sufficiency standard and so we're it's a gap basket so they pay they get a reduced cost and then we have a retail basket too that people can buy we work to provide local produce for members of our community uh, regardless of income level and we do other programs like we have a summer weekend meals for children program it's a weekend food bag program um, we're going to be packing three to four hundred food bags um, each week this summer during our summer break and we run a free little pantry program. We do gleaning in the fall. If we have excess produce, it goes into our food bank system here in town and we do free garden kits um, for SNAP and WIC clients. Um, they get a little starter kit with seeds, transplant plants, and like a map of how to plant and where to plant. It sounds exhausting. It's a lot of work, yeah. What do we got, speaking of work, what do we got going on in here? So this is, when was this planted? Um, so the bigger stuff was planted in March. And so this is, this is succession planting in, in a visual, you can really differently see the, what I'm trying to do here. So I want a continuous harvest for the next like six weeks. So we're gonna harvest our mature spinach and then like our next bed of spinach was planted four weeks later. And like, it's not ready to go right now, but it will be in two to three weeks. Um, we've got some radishes that are ready to pick. We've got some that aren't ready to pick. So um, this is all, yeah, like I said, succession planting, um, multiple, you know, the same crops are planted at multiple different times for a longer harvest, but we're gonna, we're gonna harvest some spinach, some of the mixed lettuce is ready, um, some bok choy is ready, and some radishes are ready. And we can do this all with the, uh, the no. doohickey. Well, not radishes. Well, if you stick it far enough in the ground. <laughs> no, so this is gonna be for like the spinach. It, the spinach will do really well with this. Um, the lettuce will also do really well with this. Okay, so I have seen lots of videos that I've seen, like obviously this is not the most comfortable position. So I've seen lots of videos where people have like modified this and made the handle larger. Yeah. Like, you know, test run. We're just gonna, we're gonna see. So, and part of the reason like I wanna do this now is so like in two weeks when like I have to do things for real for like for EPP and I have to be able to do it efficiently. Like I have to pack 25 bags of this next in two weeks. So like this is to work the kinks out a little bit. Like this is. So you're, you're basically just saying if I screw up, cut me some slack. Yeah. Okay. Is it working? I don't know. Seems to be. It's cutting it. How do you empty this? You just dump it out the side, I guess. Look at the pretty spinach. That's that's a pretty good chunk of spinach there. That is a pretty good chunk of spinach. Come to the farm store. Buy some spinach. <laughs> I think you missed a bunch. <laughs> I think you're right. Kind of the middle needs a little grazing. Ready? Yep. Oh, why is it spinning, throwing it Here. out? <laughs> Push it back. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Yep, hit it. Okay, so I'm going to try and get... Whoa! Whoa! We're just oh. flinging lettuce everywhere. Slow, it slow flinging? it down. Slow down the, slow down the drill. Okay, are you full or are you gonna do any more? I'm good. Okay. This is what we're gonna go with for lettuce. Would you like some lettuce? Is it, is it clean? No. Clean enough for you. All right. So all this goes back to the shop. Where you wash it, yep. package it, yep. take it to the farm store. Yep. So, okay. So what I want to do, if this is cool with you, is I'm sure we got a bunch of people that are like Jones and to see a cow. They're like, I've seen lettuce and I've seen spinach and I've seen bok choy and I haven't seen a cow. Go so I'm gonna go check cows and then I'll come back and then I'll help you finish up. Okay. And you can tell me how good your gloves work. Yeah, I don't know. See, I mean, this is why I don't wear gloves because I'm like. I lose my fingers. How am I supposed to pick up? No, the, the harvester, you lose your fingers. These, you I lose, lose feeling. I 
lose mobility. Dexterity. Mobility. You can still move your fingers. You're just not as dexterous. Dexterous? Is that a word? I don't know. Ambidextrous? No, that's something no. different. Okay, I'm going to go check cows. Maybe we had a baby. Mm. If we have a baby, can we name it? Greens harvester is kind of a weird name for a baby cow. But hey, they are greens harvesters. Cows are green. There we go. We got a name for our baby cow, if there's one out there. We're going to call them the green harvester. You can't name every cow. I don't know if I like these gloves. I can't keep them all straight anyway. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, I'll be here. See you later. Does anybody know where the gator's at? It's true, guys. We are going to head out and check cows. Can't be gardeners all day long. I think I still have some spinach or lettuce in my teeth. But anyway, uh, yesterday, if you remember, we, uh, we let all the cows out. Um, we don't have any real snow or anything due until next Tuesday, so they're going to get a chance to stretch their legs. But that means we've got a little bit more driving to do to, to check all the cows. But the nice thing is that cows kind of separate themselves off into groups. There's usually the haves and the have-nots. Uh, the haves have calves. The have-nots, well, they don't. So we're going to check some a big old group of haves right now. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? You live? Once we get away from the haves, we uh, start getting into the have-nots. About half of the herd at this point has calved, so we're still waiting for a whole bunch of them to go. They all tend to hang out together as well. There we go. I think that's pretty much it. We've checked the haves. We've checked the have-nots. and. I don't think there's anybody out here that's getting ready to have anything. Oh, no, I spoke too soon. We've got a cow way off by herself. That's usually a pretty good indication. She's about half a mile off this way. We're gonna swing up and check her out. Hey, come on, get that thing loose. Come on, mama. Come on. Come on. There goes the baby. Baby has now fallen out. You're okay, mama. You're okay. You're good mama. Good job. I know you're mad at me. All right, we swing into action. Okay. Calf is... It's a boy. Yeah. We back away. Good job, Mom. Oh, look at him trying, trying to get up already. Look at you, boy. Good boy. You gonna get up? Number 43. <laughs> the Greens Harvester. Eh. Doesn't really have the greatest ring to it, but I kind of like it. Alrighty, we are, we're all set. We're heading out. And uh, we're going to go back and give Erin a hand. Probably wash her hands first. Um, then we'll give her a hand. How's it going? How are you? Good. You find a baby? We watched one be born. Oh, sure. And I thought it was hip locked. Yeah. 
So I was getting out, I was gonna try to help, maybe, like if I could, but then it plopped out. So, and it literally like plopped out. But his name is Greenheart, Green's Harvester. Because I have that kind of time. That's not weird. <laughs> That's not weird at all. All right, what are you doing? Cool. I'm gonna wash my hands. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then I'll help you. Okay. At least I know if this whole ranching thing doesn't work out, I can become a professional produce bagger. I think we work relatively well together. You and them are doing <laughs> <laughs> They ain't doing nothing but watching. You and me. I don't, I honestly don't mind like in the summertime, like helping out with the gardens, I don't like weeding. I'm not, I don't, nobody likes weeding, but I, nobody should like weeding. It, it's weird if you like to weed. I think I just like working with you. That's what I think it is. You know, I work by myself like all winter. Like you don't come out and feed with me or nothing. I don't mind spinach. I don't mind green stuff. If I had to cook it myself, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't go like buy corn or whatever, like, no, and cook it. Totally responsible for your food and safety. There are TV dinners that have vegetables in them. Corn is not vegetable. It is a vegetable. It's barely a vegetable. Okay. Pot pies. They have peas in them. Carrots, Marie Callender, 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 whatever her name is, she takes care of us. She she should be like the spokesperson for single guys, because well, not even single guys. Like I eat pot pies. I like pot pies. Yes, because you have to feed yourself lunch. Corn dogs. There is corn in a corn dog. They couldn't call them corn dogs if it didn't have corn in it. That would, that would be false advertising. I don't know if you're right. Technically, corn dog, a corn dog is a vegetable. <laughs> it is. The, first, the corn dog's first name is corn. This is the farm store. That's Aaron. That's the fridge. All the stuff. Maybe I'll just stop back by later. Okay, maybe. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Closer to the cash register, the better. Yeah. Kind of like the Inquirer. You know, they put it up next to the cash register so people buy it. Buy it. Impulse buy it. Yep. Yeah, I can grab you whatever you need. Radishes. It occurs to me that in today's episode of the daily vlog, we had about 5 million chances for some sort of sponsorship and we had nothing. What kind of sponsorship? Well, we talked about Farmer's Friend. We talked about <laughs> the Green Harvester. Yeah. We talked about, well, we have, there's Coca-Cola right there. Um, John Deere Gator was used. Uh, a farm tech high tunnel. Yeah, farm tech high tunnel. Let's just throw all the names out there. <laughs> Anybody interested, <laughs> contact us. But instead, this entire episode brought to you by the Edible Prairie Project, Aaron's nonprofit. If you would like to support a worthwhile uh, venture, which is all about getting local food in the hands of those that need it, you can always check out the description down below. Uh, we're going to put a link to Edible Prairie Project's website. Sign up for the newsletter. Yep. You can donate there as little as $1. How much does it take to feed a kid uh, for the summer? How much does that cost? It depends on the program. 
Okay, so, so I, mean, <laughs> I know I kind of sprung this on you, so. Um, our summer weekend food bags average anywhere from five to eight dollars per week. Per week, per kid? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. there you go, five bucks feeds one kid for a week in Campbell County, which is great. So thank you very for much. A for a weekend. Weekend, a week. okay, a weekend. But you, you can learn more on our website. You can learn more if you sign up for our, our newsletter. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us through our website and we can answer any of your questions. Exactly. Guys, I am gonna go get Lincoln from school. Um, I'll go back out and check Green Harvester when I get back <laughs> and, uh, and see how he's doing. And yeah, until then, uh, that's it for today from the Daily Vlog. We'll see you tomorrow. And thanks for joining us on our Wyoming Life. Say bye. bye. Say bye, Aaron. <laughs> we'll say bye, Aaron. Bye. Is that a dad joke? Do they have mom jokes? I don't think so. They should.